I'm Carolyn Choate. Welcome to the first program of the new decade. Now, there's been lots of controversy whether or not the new decade starts in 2010 or 2011, as demonstrated by all the letters to the Telegraph this week. But despite which side of that coin you're on, January is the perfect time to get re-energized about life and or those who own or manage businesses to regroup and plan for future success. My guest today has some pretty interesting advice in this department. Mike Dolpes is a local business consultant, motivational speaker, and author of a self-published book, Motion Before Motivation, the success, success secret, that's a hard one to say, that never fails. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Carolyn. Good to be here. Uh, its format is talk, interview, mm -hmm. instructional, and uh, what is your niche audience? Well, mainly business owners or people that I like to say are up, upwardly mobile, kind of in motion. They want to get somewhere, and that would be a reason to tune in. They just want to get some good information, some positive radio. That's really what the niche is. Now, uh, you're not coming here as a, a graduate of, of Harvard MBA program, and a lot of people take exception to the notion that, that the Harvard MBA knows everything about business but has no common sense or practical experience. You come from uh, a much more popular program and school, and that's the School of Hard Knocks. Yeah, definitely not the Harvard MBA by any, by any standards, no way. But again, not to knock the fact that uh, what you learn through personal experience can be of value to those watching who might be in your same boat. Yeah, totally through learning on my own, uh, studying self-help books, business books, books on sales, marketing, and then actually applying that to my business. That was the biggest teacher for me. Did you watch the movie Little Miss Sunshine? I've never seen the movie you Little Miss Sunshine. You've got to see that, my friend. I have two little girls. It sounds like something would be good for them. I don't know. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. Believe me. But if you haven't seen that movie, you must watch it because the main character, uh, played by Greg uh, Kinnear, is Richard Hoover, who is a man who writes a self-help book for business that he can't sell or, you know... Uh, <laughs> It's really a funny but serious look at dysfunction in families and business. And uh, definitely, when the kids are in bed, watch the movie because it's, uh, well, it won Best Screenplay okay. uh, Oscar several years ago. Uh, the reason I was hoping you had watched it because people might be saying out there, well, what, what does he bring to the book? Why should I buy it uh, by themselves? Uh, you're saying that if you do these, success will be no secret because you're going to plot your own course. Yeah, these uh, seven principles I came out with for the beginning of the new year, certainly they can all be used by themselves or they can be all used together and just very simple you know, action steps that a business owner can take. The other sure. point is that they say there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. So these are a compilation of, of lessons you've learned in life. And the first one is develop a sense of urgency. And I like your point that this is not about hurry up, the sky is falling. Yeah. It's what? It's not, like I said, it's not about hurry up, let's make hasty decisions because we got to get it done. It's really about developing a sense of urgency, especially if you're in business for your clients and customers. I had a new client this week and my, my partner's actually on vacation. So I had pushed back some deadlines and I had told him, this is probably not going to happen as quickly as we'd like it to, but I'm going to work on what I can do on my end for you. And I got that done. You know, I worked late to do it. And I emailed him, said, okay, this is all in place. Now we're ready to go to the next step. He emailed me back and he said, wow, I can't believe, I, thanks so much for getting that done so quickly. You know, like, and that, that's what I mean, so I can live it, a sense of urgency. I wanted to just get it done for him, and then, you know, he, he can go implement it. And I would hopefully coach him to say, get these implemented quick. So implementing things, having urgency about getting things done in your business that are going to produce, be productive. That's what I mean by having a sense of urgency. Just Proactive, get it done. Proactive, not reactive. Yeah, it's definitely not about being reactive and, you know, here's the phone ringing, here's the email. You know, it's about developing a sense of urgency. We've identified the goals. Now, attack, attack, attack. Set ambitious deadlines. Um, what do you mean by, uh, you know, that's a fine line between an extreme of so far away, because I'm often guilty of this myself, uh, so out of the box that sometimes you, you're left with, well, since I couldn't do it the way I wanted originally, I'm dropping it. Well, the rule is if you don't make the deadline, set another deadline. 
And the old saying about deadlines is, is without the deadline, nothing, it's the best invention ever because nothing else would have ever been invented without it. So the point of setting ambitious deadlines is it's just maybe bring it a little closer so it ties into the sense of urgency to get it done. And then if you don't make that deadline, okay, set another one. But if anything, it'll almost be like a time bomb that's ticking to say, I need to get this goal or work on this goal, get it done, get this project complete. And you, again, you have to let go of waste. We, we live in an ultra green. Uh, if you're not green yourself, the talk all around you is green. But this, this has nothing to do necessarily with green. Uh, but waste of old habits, old ways of doing things get in the way of new, more efficient ways. So expand on let go of waste well it could be especially for a business owner they just may be doing something because uh, it's just the way they've done it for so long and maybe it's not as productive anymore but they're just holding on to it so the key is to be able to step back or maybe just an outside person that's why consultants are good you know they can step back and they can see things from a different standpoint they say wait maybe this isn't productive maybe this isn't working but why are we holding on to this maybe we so can let re this go reevaluation reevaluating for sure of where it, also time you know is there anything that can be delegated am i doing things that can be delegated to an independent contractor, or maybe I can hire a part-time employee to do this. That's what I mean by letting go of waste. Where am I wasting time? Where are things not as productive as they could be? And those would be considered waste. Well, I'll put you on the spot then and <laughs> say, um, if you practice what you preach, you know, what sorts of things have you found in your own business that you're, you're of course, in this technological age, you know, it's easy to see all the things you could be doing, but harder for some of us who are technically challenged, like myself, to embrace them. Right, so for instance, what I, what I, um, I try to make sure I'm checking email at certain hours of the day, not all day, because that can be a time spent in, okay, checking, returning, checking, returning, maybe clumping that all together. So I like to clump activities, that's one way I'll get rid of waste. By not having this, it's like, you know, washing the dishes. You know, I'm either, if, if I'm going to wash a whole sink full of dishes, I still have to turn the water on, let it get hot. You know, I still have to go through that same process. You're put not soap in a sponge, a cup not watch one, and then go back, else. and then come back and wash another thing. That's, that's probably the best analogy I can give. And then, you know, I always look to farm out things that, that, um, that other people can do that are just, they're stronger than I. I don't really do graphic work, so I hire people to do that kind of stuff. Marketing. Be unique in your marketing. Well, that's... That's a, that's a no-brainer. Right. Um, that being said, what really got me about this part of your messages are your marketing messages to inwardly focused and egotistical. Oh, my gosh. When you're doing local advertising, you know, it seems that it's a lot about ego. You know, that a producer is so interested in getting money for an ad that they don't have the audacity to say to their client, you know what? You really stink at being the star of, this, of your own commercial. One of the problems is that small business owners, what they do, if they're not savvy in marketing or they're not looking at it from a perspective of being detached from their business, yes, they definitely will be too inwardly focused. But more, worst of all, what they do is they kind of look at the bigger players and they try to emulate them in a yeah, poor way. and that's a problem because you know they they live with a whole different set of economics than the small business owner does. See, ultimately, people want to buy from people, and see, there's not another you, there's not another me.